Hey, Steve Stein from Guitar Zoom here. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, today, what I'd like to do is talk to you about how I approach coming up with some simple guitar tones that are very effective. And I know when we talk about guitar tones, it tends to be a really touchy subject for people because people are pretty adamant about their guitar tone, and I think that's awesome. So this isn't going to be, you know, a video trying to sway you from the things you already believe about guitar tone or the kind of amp you're using, solid state versus tube versus Marshall versus whatever. It's not that. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I tend to set up my rig for jamming, for live performance, for recording, all that sort of thing, and see if I can't just help you if you need it in better understanding how to get a more effective guitar tone. So I'm gonna be using the Hughes & Kentner um, Black Spirit 200 here, and because you can't really see the knobs, um, I'm gonna be using the app and showing you what the things look like from the app itself. So um, let me get that app ready here. So if you watch, if I switch, I've got different tones here. Okay, you can see that the, the knobs are changing and everything like that. So basically what I do is I set up four different sounds. That's the way I've always run all my stuff. You know, even though this amp can make, you know, a hundred plus different kinds of sounds, I try and get four useful sounds and then I have a foot controller, hopefully, that can run those four sounds. Now you might only have two, you might have three, you might like to run 128, right? But for me, what I do is I try and create some sort of halfway decent clean sound, a crunch sound, a rock sound, and then a lead tone. That's what I do. And I thought I would just break that down for you really quick. So you can kind of get a sense of the Black Spirit 200, but you can also get a sense of how I try and run things. Now, my tone has a lot to do with, as anybody's tone, with your fingers, with your guitar, and most certainly with your pickups. So let's go ahead and go to the clean tone first here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take off the reverb and the delay. So none of that is on there. And what I do is you can see over here, um, well, you probably can't see, but there's a, there's if all the way to the far left, there's a clean, crunch, lead, and ultra, okay? And what it's on right now is clean, okay? Now, if I go to the center section where you see channel volume gain, you can see I'm moving the gain right here. Now, often what I'll do is I'll push that gain up a little bit, and then what I do is the, the settings on my guitar have a lot to do with the way that I get my tone. And it might work for you and it might not, but because I grew up playing EMGs, I've been playing EMG pickups since the 90s, and they're pretty hot pickups because they're active pickups. So what I do is, let's say I turn that gain all the way up. And you can hear that there's some overdrive happening there. And that's partly because of the way I've got the amp set, and it's also partly because of the pickups that I'm using. So what I do is if I switch to this, I switch to a center position, okay? So I've got a five position switch here. If I go to position number three, okay? Now I'm getting in the realm of the cleans that I like to do. So what I try and do is every for every patch or preset that I make, I try and have more options available by the way I run my pickups, okay? And again, you have to figure out what works best for you. And then we'll get back to the amp in just a second. So if I wanted a little... You can see I'm getting some break up there, which is really nice. If I didn't want that, I could go to position two. There's a little less. I can go to position three. And there's a lot less, right? Okay, if I go all the way up, again, I'm getting some breakup. And I don't normally do that on my clean channels. I'm always, almost always in positions one, two, or three, maybe four. If I go to four, then what I have to do is I have to pull my volume down. And I get a really nice sound that way. So there's always three steps for me. Once I've dialed in a sound that I like, and I almost always dial it in with my center position pickup. That's ideally the sound that I'm looking for. So, you know, you can see my treble in my mid and my bass 
are just a little bit over 12 o'clock. They're about one o'clock or so, maybe a little bit higher than that. The presence and resonance controls are at 12 o'clock. And again, I try not to, to over boost anything or undercut anything. I just kind of try and keep everything about the same. Now this particular amp has um, different cabs that I can choose and it's got a sagging thing on there. So the cap types can change. You know, if I click that, I can change. I've got a 212 modern right now. Let's say I went to a vintage open back. Or a 412 vintage. Now you're going to notice those a lot more once I get to some different kinds of distortions, but just to kind of show you, and the sagging is almost like a bit of a compression. If I put it on one, and if I put it on eight, and again, I think you're going to notice that more when I get to some of the distortion. But anyway, so I'm going to put that back on four is fine. Somewhere around there is just fine. Okay, then what I do is once I've dialed in just a usable clean tech channel with some options by changing my, my settings and stuff like that, then what I do is I tend to run a little bit of reverb and a little bit of delay. Okay, and my rule with that is, is that when you're playing the reverb and delay, for me, the reverb and delay shouldn't be as loud or louder than my original guitar volume because then it just becomes really washy. Now, sometimes that's really neat. Uh, but in this case, I'm not looking for that. So what I do is with my delay, let me shut the reverb off for a second. So there's just a couple of them. Now I could add more, but that's, that's probably enough for me. Okay, and then I add a little bit of reverb. That's usable, okay? Now you might like your reverb a little different or your delay, you might want a little bit more delay. For me, if I turn back, or if I turn up the feedback more, and I start getting a lot of it, I mean, it's cool, but in a practical sense, I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably use that much. So that's all I do to try and dial in a, a halfway decent clean tone. I try and center everything out a little bit. Um, I find, again, for me, the most important thing is my guitar settings. When I'm trying to set this up, if I had set it up, you know, for this, like on my first position, okay, then I'd have to drop this gain way back. And for me, that's just a little too, too tinny. And then the problem is, is if I go anywhere else, maybe my, my fifth position, that might be cool, but my fourth position, it's gonna sound really nice now, third position. That's quite nice too. So it all depends. I might go somewhere like that. And then again, back off my volume a little bit, go into that third position of my pickup selector. And then if I need a little bit more, then I can jump in there and I don't have to change presets. That's what the big thing is for me. So in my mind, instead of a preset on my foot, on my foot controller, excuse me, being this, just this, it's clean. And then there's crunch. This, this, you know, uh, pedal button A, if you will, Okay, isn't this, it's actually this, because I can get a lot of different sounds from this. But if my maximum isn't enough, that's when I move to my foot controller B, right? Now again, you're gonna notice that the preamp is somewhat the same. We're looking at about two o'clock here. Um, the gain is up a little bit. I'm still on the clean channel. Okay, do you see that? The difference is, is if I go back to channel A here, you'll, the boost button is off. When I go here, 
the boost button is now on. And it makes for a really nice just rock and roll kind of kind of sound. Really not my soloing sound, but a great just regular rock and roll tone. And the nice thing about this, again, if I go to that third position, back off my volume, then I get a nice kind of kind of sound. So again, channel B or button B, whatever you want to call it, isn't just this, it's this. So I can really use this for a lot of different things. It's not the sparkling clean necessarily that I had on, on the first channel, right? But it makes for a nice blues channel. And I can always back up and get some nice tones that way. My reverb and delay are very similar in settings. I mean, again, I don't, I don't get really worried about it in my brain that it's exactly the same. I just know that after I play, there should just be a couple that trail off afterwards and then that's enough, okay? So if I move to channel three, now what you're gonna notice is I've bumped that up to the lead channel, but the boost is off. Now the crunch is a great channel too. I'm just not using it at this point, but it's a wonderful channel. Um, but I just found boosting the clean channel actually worked just fine for what I'm doing. So now, now it's got a bit more meat to it. Okay. Okay, and I can also back that up. Now it's not gonna get back off to the level that the other ones were at because I'm running a lot more gain now. But it does work nice when I'm playing. And then I wanna back off. In something. I need to come back up. I can fall into that. So I already have planned in my mind when I start a song, which channel is probably going to be the best for that particular situation. And it's not always this third channel. This is a great one for me to do more of the shreddy stuff and things like that, or just the, the big sustain. kinds of sounds, right? Uh, okay, so it's just a nice well-rounded kind of hard rock melodic channel, but nothing is crazy on here or anything like that. Still running just a little bit of reverb and delay, okay? And then we'll switch over to the last channel, my fourth channel. This is more of my solo channel. Now, you'll notice that I'm still on the lead channel, but now I've added the boost on. So this is more gain that I would normally use in my rhythm sections and things like that, but it really makes for, for the faster runs and things like that. And this one, I really wouldn't, I wouldn't try and back this off, okay? This is meant for soloing, that's what this is. So as I'm playing, this is where I would go for a solo. And I might run a little more, you know, maybe. I might run a little bit more. Of those. See how easy, easy it is with the, the, the app, the iPad, it's just really nice. Maybe I'd run something like that. I think that's more than I'd normally use. 
but it still sounds really cool. So it's very easy to dial in. And what I want you to notice is most of the time, I might drop that back a little bit, is that I try and run my low, mid, and high not much past 12 o'clock. My mids will often run a little bit higher, and that's one thing I will tell you is oftentimes when you're running distortion, try to get away with as minimal amount of gain as you need for the most part. Again, my lead channel's a little bit different because I need a little bit more confidence in there, but my regular channels don't have an overbearing amount of, of distortion. They just have enough to get the job done. And then I tend to run my mids a little bit hotter, just depending on what the situation is. And, um, and then a little bit of reverb and delay. And I think that if you try and start with just 12 o'clock on your low mids and highs, and then try and boost your, your mids a little bit, you know, your highs a little bit, whatever. But if you've got to run everything at, you know, full blast, Here's the problem I'll tell you, and you've probably heard me talk about this, but mid-range is the frequency that guitar players need to be heard. When we play in what we call our a bedroom tone, oftentimes as we're listening to a CD or we're listening to um, you know Spotify or whatever it might be that we're using, we get a misconception of the actual tone and we tend to run the mids really low. And then when you actually have to play with somebody you know, live or play on stage or whatever, and you don't have that mid-range, nobody can hear you. If you just have the lows and the highs cranked and there's no mid-range, the, the frequency is gone with the bass player and the drummer and everything like that. And, and you just wind up, it just doesn't sound good. So oftentimes if you can cut that that bass a little bit, depending on the amp that you're using, you know, with a Mesa Boogie, you might have more of a bass range where on a Marshall, oftentimes the bass isn't isn't a really responsive uh, knob necessarily. Just depends on the, the pedal or the, the amp that you've got and that sort of thing. But if you run that mid-range up a little bit more, you cut through the mix and people can hear you more. And then the gain, you just wanna use as much gain as you need for your situation. If you're in a metal band, obviously you're gonna be using more gain, but I am gonna tell you that you don't need as much as you might think you do, because if you just run way too much gain all the time, everything winds up sounding really buzzy and really flubby, and it's hard to, to sound, it's hard to make your guitar tone sound tight. So again, that's where like with this uh, Black Spirit, the, the cab options, which I'm running direct right now, that's what this thing does, um, and the sagging can make a big difference. So let's say I, and again, I don't wanna waste your time with this, but just to show you. See how it, it, it's almost like a blanket kind of comes over it when there's a lot of distortion. So the sagging for me is a great button to use when I'm clean or maybe on crunch a bit. But if I'm running a lot of distortion, I try and keep it down to about one or two just because it winds up. Again, kind of puts a blanket over everything. Everything begins to sound like this a bit more. And this is where, again, you're gonna notice those cabs a lot. to have those options if they're available and if they're not that's okay just kind of use what i said and see if you can kind of dial something in so even if you only had you know a setup where you only had two buttons you know you could set up a kind of a clean crunch and then kind of a rock lead channel and just use your volume and use your toggle switch or your position switch your pickup selector if you will to kind of find where you need to be. I've heard stories of a lot of artists that will, let's say I go back to channel C here. So let's say I've got this topped off with a lot of, as much distortion as I need, right? So maybe I've got even more distortion on here. More than I'd normally use on this. And then what I can do is I can back off my volume control and kind of tighten things up that way. And then if I need to solo or something, bring it all the way up. I'm gonna bring the mids up a little bit. I'm gonna bring the highs up a little bit. I'm not gonna go to the middle position. I'm just gonna keep it on the first one. I just dropped my volume. Back. I go 
to solo, I can bring it all the way up. And that'll give me a little bit more to go on too. So that's another thing that you can do. It's just learning the combination of the volume control, your pickups of your guitar, and then trying to set up your amp again so you understand that maybe your channel isn't just paper thin, but it's got some options on it when you start using these other things, okay? So hopefully that helps you a little bit. Um, the Black Spirit is an awesome amp. Check it out if you've got time or availability sometime, or just apply it to what it is that you're using. Again, I try to avoid solid state versus two versus, you know, 100 watt versus 50 watt. Find what works for you financially, find what works for you um, realistically, right? If you're not playing a lot of huge shows, you have to think about what's practical for you. And maybe you can um, offer some advice to somebody else in the uh, comments below of what you use and why, okay? Instead of saying you do like and don't like, say what you use and why you use it. What, what benefit does it have for your life? And maybe that can help somebody else. So take care, stay positive, and uh, keep practicing, and I'll talk to you soon. And make sure you do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, and like and share the video if you've gotten benefit out of it, and I'll talk to you soon.